Good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of day's trading session, Friday, 25th of November 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, market numbers, let's just do the number crunching in terms of uh, end of day. Let's just bring up the data for you folks, the FTSE 100 and the... Uh, the uh, European indices such as the German DAX, the French CAC. Okay, so uh, economic data here that I have today. European markets certainly did manage to finish in the green. You had the FTSE closing at 6840, the uh, the DAX closing at uh, 10700. Okay, so currently trading around that figure. The CAC up uh, 7 points, 4550. You have the IBEX that managed to actually finish uh, eke out again as well. Okay, uh, and the uh, stock 600 certainly more or less flat on the day. Okay, so in terms of fundamentals towards the end of the day, you had uh, weaker uh, exports and imports from the UK, your disposable income certainly dropping, but retail sales certainly helping, CBI data certainly helping the FTSE 100 negate that weakness. That's what it certainly seems like. But we uh, also had a OPEC weakness as well, with Saudi Arabia potentially shunning the non-OPEC meeting, saying that it's pointless and it's frivolous, okay, and therefore jeopardizing the whole OPEC potential output cut okay now the oil prices have actually dropped by 1.5 dollars thereafter hitting a pivot low at the moment at 45.7 uh, and again that has had no effect on equities at all the s p is still trading at 2210 certainly holding above 2200 the nasdaq is holding above as well european indices certainly have managed to squeeze short squeeze higher and the markets remain oblivious to any risk whatsoever i mean you have Risk in France, you have risk in Italy as well, uh, potential uncertainty there. The ECB has highlighted a potential risk as well. But like I said, the markets are totally oblivious to it and choose to uh, ignore it. And that's the status quo. Now, whether you want to uh, attribute that to light volume and so on and so forth, you can certainly do so. That is your own opinion, okay? From my understanding, fundamentals always trump uh, any potential uh, light volume environment. And one should always adhere to your trading strategy regardless of a light volume environment. So where are we then? So technically, let's see exactly where we finished and where we stand. Now, the German DAX, as you can see here, short squeeze high is going, going into the close and certainly ignored any weakness. The daily chart certainly still remains weak. No real change in the daily chart, folks. OK, looking at a 60 minute chart now. I was expecting this bear flag to play out again, like I said, given the light volume, etc. You are looking at the HS formation still, so you're looking at the red sho uh, left shoulder here, you're looking at the head and the right shoulder here. So, again, it's all about the uh, the actual right shoulder remaining below the Fib 61 to 75%, and that's exactly what it's doing right now. So, therefore, looking for the flush on the German DAX to continue on the downside. Moving on to the French CAC as well. French CAC back into that 4550 resistance zone. Okay, so looking for weakness. Daily chart as well, weakness. And the 60 minute chart certainly remains bearish with this potential HS formation. So again, provided we remain between below the 65 75% Fib, bias remains bearish. Okay, folks. Right. In terms of the FTSE 100, okay, certainly uh, remaining stubborn today in terms of uh, not falling lower, even with the budget concern. And the uncertainty regarding the budget certainly has been unfazed. You are looking at resistance at 50 and 61% on the daily chart of FTSE, so therefore looking bearish for a lower high. Uh, the 60-minute chart did actually negate the resistance at uh, 6,830 and certainly managed to push higher, although we are still below the SIB safe 75 and 61%. So buyer still remains bearish on the, uh, on the actual FTSE 100 chart itself. Looking at the 10-minute chart, you clearly have higher highs and higher lows and that certainly needs to be respected to a large extent although technically we certainly seem to be uh, respecting this key diagonal trend line here so what keep an eye on that uh, in terms of resistance you have resistance here at 6834 the next level is clearly seen at 6854 so watch out for that uh, in terms of a bearish pattern certainly looking at one here right now uh, looking for a hns formation a 10 minute chart to look potentially look to flush lower the pivot high certainly has held at 6850. We flush lower back to 6834. I dump my shorts. And I'll be more than I'll be tempted to potentially open up another short position here at 6840 zone on the uh, FTSE 100. Certainly looking to potentially move back down to 6820, potentially even lower down to 6810. So certainly bearish there. 
And that bearish view is certainly uh, helped with the moving oil. So if I bring up the chart of oil, folks, I'll give you an insight there. You can see oil prices certainly finishing very bearish today. 60 minute chart, certainly flushing lower as well. 50 minute chart, you can see the actual weakness uh, transpiring. So again, looking for weakness and looking for risk aversion to kick in here. Okay, so I think that's a good summation. My understanding really is that the markets are uh, certainly moving lower, although the U.S. markets really is the uh, the only uh, only alternative argument is that the U.S. markets continue to short squeeze higher. Whether you want to attribute that, I mean, you clearly see the volume dropping, dropping, dropping today as well. 60-minute chart at the moment, the FTSE is certainly looking to. I was expecting this bullish channel to hold, and it hasn't done so. So again have to respect that for now my stop loss here, i am going to short the SP. my stop loss is at 2214 i was expecting a shakeout and then a reversal down to this potential gap fill at 2180 on the back of bearish news opec failure as well well again perceived failure with oil prices dropping 1.5 dollars okay ever since the uh, saudi news and that certainly is not preventing the market from falling at all which is pretty amazing which is pretty amazing and you have to respect that at times so next potential move could be 2220 and potentially even higher on the S&P. It's constantly moving higher regardless of any uh, fundamental uh, bearish arguments. So again, again, whether it's a light volume phenomenon or whether it's alternative reason, given the fact that the uh, S&P certainly has been continuing to grind higher and higher, along with the uh, the Dow as well, continuing to grind higher, whether or not it can sustain itself is a, a different question altogether. So again... I'm going to remain open-minded, okay? Uh, my bearish bias is based on uh, fundamentals uh, along with the intermarket analysis of the currency market with the Aussie JPY topping out, the USD JPY topping out, oil prices topping out, CRB index topping out. So, and again, it's, uh, it's not just one angle, it's multiple dimensions. Also the bond market as well and other various equity markets. Okay, I think that's a wrap then, in folks. Okay, my bias certainly remains bearish. We'll continue to hold it, okay, especially going into Monday's trading. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye.